Hi everyone, it's Chris Paul here from L3D Accessories. Xtool have asked me to produce a tutorial today to show you how to produce stunning low relief images using the Xtool F1. In order for us to produce some AI generated images, we are going to use the XCS software and within that there's some functionality called AllMake which will allow us to produce AI images based on what description we put in. I think seeing as we're getting close to Christmas, a festive theme would be the perfect way to do this. So without further ado, let's get started. In order to carry out this task, we will require an Xtool F1 laser engraver, a PC or a laptop, wooden object, and the Xtool XCS software. I'll be using a square coaster for this exercise, as the AllMake software will be generating a square image, making life a little bit easy for us in the process. For any beginners out there, ensure you initialize the autofocus on your laser before you begin as you can see me do right here. Now we will begin with the tutorial. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go into the AllMake software and generate an image. You can see a few that I've previously generated here. Within the AllMake feature, we select a style and for this it will be low relief. We can also define the aspect ratio and the image count. You'll see a description box above. Here we can type exactly what we want it to generate for us. So in our case, Santa riding his sleigh. So once you've written your description, what you want to do is select the red generate button. This will now produce some images for you to choose from. We've got two options there and we will go for the one on the left as it's a nice festive picture of Santa Claus, which is what we want to achieve. A new pop-up window will then open. Within this window, we want to just explore some of the options. You can regenerate, dislike, share it. In this case, we're going to import to XES. And as you can see, it places it directly on our workspace. I'll be reducing the size of the image here because as you probably saw from the square coaster, it's approximately 95 to 100 millimeters in length and width. So I'll be setting it to 90 to leave a nice border around the outside of it. Once resize, centrally locate the image. The next step will be to actually edit the image to make it a bit more sharper. So as you can see, there's a number of options to select. Drag the sharpness all the way up to its maximum, which in this case is 50. Now we will be making a copy of the image as we want to be doing two runs for this particular engraving. We want a dark laser pass and a lighter one. So right click, copy and then paste and drag the image off to the side slightly just so we can identify the two different images easily. Next, select the second image and also go to the adjust tab and within that, reduce the grayscale amount by approximately one third. In this case, I have settled on 156. As you can see, it's lightened the image, which will essentially enhance the dark areas and allow the second pass to have a nice deeper engraving, increasing the 3D relief look. So the next thing we wanna do is we wanna assign this second image to its own layer. This allows us to select the two easily what we also want to do is rename the layers just for our own convenience and to make things easier. So the newest image will be layer two and the original image will be layer one. And then we will drag layer two below layer one. And what this will mean is it will force the laser engraver to engrave layer one first and then layer two second. That's a really good tip for anyone who didn't realize you could do that. Now what we will do is we will align both images centrally to each other. So we'll use this feature here, select the image, go to the drop down, horizontal align center and vertical align center. Now we know both images are exactly on top of each other. We'll then draw a box around both of them, right click and group the objects together. So the purpose of grouping is that we only have to assign the engraving settings once now, it will apply to the group, which is both of the images together. So we're gonna increase the dot dur duration and that will go from 100, which is a default to 200. The power range will be between one and 75 and the DPI will be 700. That's gonna give us a really good contrasting image. We'll be changing the bitmap mode to Atkinson, which is very similar to Jarvis, but it preserves the light and dark areas better. The next stage will be to frame and make sure that we're central. This is where you need to adjust your piece of wood just to make sure you're in the right place. Now select go to process and it will show you approximately how long the engraving is going to take. 
as well as giving you a graphical representation of how the engraving will look when finished. Now select the start button and press the big blue button on the side of the machine to begin the engraving. So this engraving has actually been sped up a hundred times. As you saw at the beginning of the video, it's a 40 minute engraving, but for this tutorial purposes, I wanted to speed it up. So the first pass is doing layer one, which as you can see, isn't dark, but it's actually getting the detail. The second pass you're seeing now is layer two, which is adding the dark depth contrast and creating the 3D image we are trying to achieve. Now that the engraving's finished, we can lift up the door and we can look at the piece of art we have just created. I'm absolutely blown away by what the Xtool F1 has done here today. I mean, look at the contours and the contrast. That engraving is beautiful. Other Xtool machines can also do very similar engravings, so have a go. This is the end of the tutorial. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget to like and follow L3D Accessories on social media.